So in this video, I'm making a snowman. It's a snowman that uh, I've seen before. Uh, actually, Todd McFarland, McFarland Toys made this uh, snowman. Looks a lot like this. It's a spin-off of that one. Um, I didn't use it directly. I just know what it looks like, and I thought that I would recreate it. I'm actually making this for my sister for Christmas. She likes snowmen, so I figured I'd make one of my own snowmen for her. So, you know, you start out this just like making any other snowman with some balls. You just balled up some aluminum foil and I'm stacking one on top of the other. Uh, I tried the uh, three stack snowman. I think uh, on McFarland's snowman, he just has three balls stacked on top of each other. And on this top ball, I'm actually making it into like a Pac-Man shape. I'm squashing my thumb in the middle of the foil so I can have a mouth. But I didn't quite like the way it sat up there, so I'm adding another ball on top. And I'm going to have the uh, his head hang off the side. And, you know, that top ball wasn't round enough for me, so I beat it with the, um, the pair of pliers there. <laughs> so basically I have three balls stacked on top of each other with the head hanging out the side. So the McFarland's uh, snowman has six arms on it. And that's the part I thought that was really cool. He had six, six different arms on it. So that's what I'm doing here, I'm making six arms. And actually at the bottom arm, I split off into two. So he has seven hands, but six arms. I thought that came out pretty cool. So I'm just kind of positioning them here, see how, how they look and how they're going to come out. Uh, once that's done, I need to put some fingers on the arms. On um, this is uh, this I made this snowman before I made my pumpkin stacked pumpkin. So this was my first attempt at making fingers like this, and I like the way I did it better on the stacked pumpkin. So basically, I balled up some uh, aluminum foil, a little piece, and then uh, the little cut pieces of wire I have, I just taped them on the aluminum foil. Uh, doing it uh, the way I did it in the stack pumpkin was easier. So I basically repeated that for all seven hands. Mm, I think the top arms I have only three fingers on them and all the other arms I have four. Okay, after doing all that I rolled out some sheets of clay on my pasta machine, the thickest setting. This is a uh, super sculpey. And then I also have to attach the snowman to the, the wood base. So basically I just drilled two holes, put some wire in there, and I'm adding clay to the bottom of them, and then put some bacon bond on top of the wood plaque, and then secure them to the wood plaque. Once doing this, he, uh, he stuck there pretty well, didn't move, so bacon bond holds a lot of things down really well. So I'm just covering him up with a basic coat of uh, clay and smoothing it out. It's going to be snow, so it doesn't have to be perfect. <clears throat> Alright, and then I wanted to look uh, a little different from McFarland, so I'm adding some spines on the back, which I later go and switch. I did all this work and then showed my wife, and she thought the spines looked kind of goofy, so. I cut the spines off and turned them into just some lumps. He's got some lumps going down his back. Now I'm fleshing out the face. I want to have a, uh, a large open mouth with a lot of teeth in it because you know I like teeth. So that's basically what I'm doing. I'm, uh, I'm adding a, a large jaw hanging down, large gaping mouth and uh, uh, filling it all out as I go with the clay and adding here and there where I think it should go. really don't have any plan. I mean, I do have an overall plan of what I want to look like. But as I'm doing this, I'm just adding clay where I think it looks good. And after looking at it, if it doesn't look good, I rip it off like I did with these spines on the back. Basically, if you're wanting to Put together something like this you know and have it uh, make it your own way just kind of uh, don't be afraid to just throw clay on there and 
kind of shape it out and see how it comes it comes out. Sometimes you have these happy accidents, you know, like Bob Ross used to say. Sometimes I put clay somewhere or well, I'll just give it a go and wow, it actually looks good. It's a happy accident. And other times, like, you know, I thought it would be a good idea to have spines on a snowman, but realistically, I guess they have to be like icicles hanging out of the back. I guess I could have done it that way. That may have been, that would have been cool, actually. I should have done that. Maybe next one. But the spines really didn't make any sense, and I agreed with my wife. She, she was right. They didn't make sense. So lumps like somebody hit him with a bunch of snowballs down the back would probably have been better. So I'm just kind of filling out the eyes, giving him a, a, a mean looking brow, and just filling in clay here and there just to make it look nice. Okay, no, maybe not look nice, make it look menacing. Yeah, that's what I'm going for, not nice, I'm looking for menacing. I actually made this snowman last year and uh, I just never never got around to v editing this video so now I'm doing it so so I'll have it this year just in time for a snowman season so you guys can make your own snowman like this outside As you can see, this is one of those videos where when I'm working on it, I forget to keep the snowman in the frame. Sometimes I pull him a little too close to my body when I'm looking at stuff. I need to have a cameraman behind me that's filming the whole time. That way they're always got something in the shot. I do have my camera on a uh, an arm, but it's not always right. Okay, so I've lost some of the video here, you know, when you think you push record, it doesn't always happen. So basically all I did added, I uh, added a nose and two eyes made out of coal. But for the snow pattern, I balled up some aluminum foil and, and hit the snowman all over the place to make it look like snow. And here I'm adding the uh, clay to the arms. I'm using Sculpey Primo. This is before cost clay came out but Sculpey Primo is a little tougher than uh, Super Sculpey so it's got a little more give to it and bends so I'm covering the arm with Sculpey Primo and basically like I did on the uh, pumpkin I'm just it's gonna look like the arms are made out of wood so it's really easy to put the clay on there and just make sure all the, the seams are you know, none of the wire shows and it can be lumpy, it can be not even and you know, it's supposed to look like gnarled wood. So all you do is put the clay around the arms and then I'm dragging the dental tool through it to give it some texture, some line textures and it came out pretty good. I wish I had twisted some of the figures. I did do it on one of the arms, but I should have done more. That twisted finger look, I really like how it came out on the uh, pumpkin. So now my favorite part, adding the wicked teeth. I have a, a plate over there I dumped a bunch of teeth out on and I pick, the, pick them out as I go and just stick them in the head. I really don't think you can have too many teeth. I haven't gotten to that point yet. I'm, possibly you can have too many teeth, but I'm not sure. Oh, the only thing I added is that tongue. Uh, tongue also made out of uh, Sculpey Primo. Basically, you know, I rolled out a snake of clay, cut it in half, squashed it down to make it look like a tongue, and then I, I probably just used a dental tool to drag some texture lines in it, or I may have used a stamp. And the nose, I also on the nose, uh, textured it to look like a carrot. You know, I just kind of put some lines around it to make it more look more carroty. I didn't go with the button nose like Frosty, I went with the carrot because it looks a little more wicked.
Oh, and also you can see here over top of the shoulders there where the shoulders would be. I kind of made it, uh, I don't know, I built it up over the shoulders, shoulder area there. I thought that looked kind of cool. So here I am installing the arms. Um, the snowman is not, uh, actually I did, I did bake the snowman. So he is baked right now. And the way that these arms went on, they were kind of a, a pain because they didn't want to stay. Like you can see, it keeps moving. It doesn't want to stay where I put it. But uh, I had to prop them up in a certain position with baking. After baking, they stayed where I wanted them to go, but not initially. Uh, I fixed that problem when I was doing the uh, pumpkin because I pushed the, the arms in before putting the clay on and they stayed exactly where I wanted them to be. So another lesson learned putting these things together. So I'm basically just pushing the arms in and then smoothing out the, uh, the clay. And then I got to go back and hit it with the, the balled up aluminum foil to give it that snow texture. You can see that one arm just kind of drooped around and didn't stay where I wanted it to be. Like in the fast motion, you can see how they just slowly move on down, not in the spot where I left them. So oh, I also used a toothbrush for some of the texture. So as you can see, I was hitting it with, uh, I took a balled up some aluminum foil and put it over top of one of my ball tools so I could hit it where I wanted it to be. So I'm getting ready to bake the arms on. And as you can see, I got to use some sticks to hold the things up where they, they should have been. So I just used a ball of clay at the bottom to hold the stick in place and then put the stick against the fingers and hold them where it needed to be. So here I'm making the hat. I had a piece of wood, so I used it to cut a perfect circle brim, and then I'm placing the brim on the head, and I cut that square in the middle to uh, give the other part of the hat something to grab onto, not just the hat. I wanted to grab onto the head. I'm going to fill that in with the bacon bond so it actually stays on the head. And I had originally made a smaller hat, but it kind of looked goofy. And again, I asked my wife for her opinion, and she thought it should be a taller hat. So this is the second attempt with a taller hat. So I uh, just made a, uh, all up a piece of foil, an oblong piece of foil, and I'm covering it with clay. And I also use a dental tool to uh, roll out some texture on the, uh, to make it give the hat some texture. So here they're just covering the, the part of the top hat with some clay. I really like how this hat turned out too. I made sure I didn't make it exactly straight. I wanted it to be bent. Sometimes it takes forever smoothing things out the way you want them. And also with this this hat, this part of the hat also, I use the, dent, the side of the dental tool. You know these dental tools, they have like a crisscross pattern on them. And then just use that and roll it over top of the, the, the side of the dental tool, roll it over the top of the hat. It gives it a material look. I know you see an ace of clay do that a lot also.
Oh, I just took the hat in there. I'm just putting a, a snake of clay in the spot between the hat and the brim, filling that in, making sure it uh, doesn't look like there's a big gap there. You can see better the, the, the lumps I put down in the middle of his back. I think those turned out pretty good. I like the way that looked. It did look better than the spines. And then the, uh, the things over his uh, top arms, it's like shoulder pads, makes him look more fancy. Can't have a top hat, hat no shoulder pads. Wow, I should have sped this up a little more. I don't know, you guys. What do you think about that? Should I leave things more normal speed? The videos would be longer, but you can see what I'm doing a little better, maybe. I'm adding a couple lines to the hat because it's bent. But, uh, yeah, if you think so, let me know in the comment sections. I have a lot of video footage, like this video. It's cut down to 25 minutes, but I have about I think three hours worth of video I recorded it at two time or two time speed maybe but I do have a lot of video that I could leave in here I think it's kind of boring sometimes but of course I'm the one that did it I'm not watching it so just let me know what you think and I'm putting a uh, a ribbon or a belt I don't know what you what do you call this part around the hat I guess it's a belt looking thing because I put a buckle on it so I don't know so I put a ribbon around it and, and then for some reason I thought uh, I should put a line around the top of it I'm not sure why but I did maybe to dress it up a little I also end up putting a buckle in the middle of it. I think I go back and add lines to it also. Yes, I do. Just giving a little more texture. So here I am. I'm cutting the uh, little square for the buckle. So I put the square in there, and then take a, a ball tool and push in the middle make it look like a square and then I finish it off with another tool to make it look like a square. The easiest part of this thing is putting the, uh, the actual snowman together because all you got to do is stack three balls of clay. I think the hat took more time than putting the snowman together. Okay, on the bottom of this, I'm just adding some clay to the bottom because I'm going to make it look like snow. And I'm using the little foil thing to make it look snow like toothbrush like you're standing in some snow. Then I thought about some more spines on the back, but then decided to take them off. So he's been baked finally again, and now it's paint time. Of course, the snowman is gonna be white. 
So I hit him with uh, all white. This is one of the ones I did not paint black first. So I hit everything snow colored with the white. And then secondly, I'm gonna hit it with a uh, dark blue wash. So the first, that's a little too black. I didn't like that. So I need more blue, less black. So I just pretty much do a really watered down blue and paint everything that was white the watered down blue and then wipe it off. Then go back and dry brush it with white. So it does have some shadow. Of course, the hat's going to be black. The other thing I had to do was hit the uh, arms with some black and fix those because they got white on the painting. Paint the tongue blue and then I dry brush some white over top of it. I do paint the um, I paint the carrot orange also. It's, you know, it's a carrot. I guess that's one one thing I used my orange paint on recently uh, for a while. So here I am dry brushing the white over top of the, the blue wash I did, trying to bring out more of the white but leave some of the blue. I left the inside of the mouth a lot more blue color. I also used some iridescent white over top of it to give it a sparkly look. You know how ice can uh, reflect the sun and look sparkly so I used some iridescent over top of that to give it more of a snowy look. When I'm painting the, uh, as you can see, I'm painting the little belt around the hat and painting that red. And now I'm going back over top of the arms. They need to look like wood. Right now they're black, so I'm hitting them with some brown and then come over top of that brown with a lighter brown color so I can get all the uh, all the lines and everything that I put in there so I can highlight those. I also dry brushed the uh, hat with some white to bring out that texture also. Picking up that uh, wood look on the arms. So that's him finished. I did not get a final video of this guy because uh, the person took him home before I could get the final video. I also painted the eyes with some black light blue paint. So under a black light they glow blue like that. And then I made another one. This is Snowman number two. He's a little different. He's close to the same but a little different. And I did get a final video of this guy but I did not film the process of making him. Overall, I think Snowman 1 may have come out better, but Snowman 2 looks pretty good also. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it.